Well, I guess I'm going to tell you this little story. I don't know if your mom or dad or anybody ever told you this, but years ago, your dad, mom, and I and Bill was in Decatur. We went out for this Saturday night party, and we all got drunk, and we didn't know who was going to drive home. Bob drove over there, but we didn't know who was going to drive home. So Bob wouldn't get in the car unless I got in the back seat with him. So I get in the back seat with him, which kind of made Linda mad. And so Bill gets in the front with Linda, and Linda's driving. So here we go, down the road. We got right there at 27 and 224 to turn like we was coming to Bluffton. And here come a cop. And that cop plowed right into the back of the car sitting beside of us. And we, buddy, we got out of there as fast as we could, and Linda drove 90 all the way home. <laughs> but we made it home, and uh, all's good, I guess. <laughs> um, the first time I met Linda, um, I was four years old. Um, Bobby, my brother, brought her home um, to meet Mom and Dad. And I remember, like it happened yesterday, where... Um, they came in through the dining room door, and I saw Linda, and I ran to the couch and buried myself in the pillows. Well, I guess one of the things I remember is Bob and I would go out and we tried to play golf, but if we had a day that looked like it was pretty good, I'd call down to the shop, and Linda would, of course, answer, and I'd just ask if he could come out and play. The other thing I think of is... Uh, the morning we had a fire at the cowboy restaurant and when it was out and everything we Bob and I and Gary Markley sat inside at the bar with the water dripping out of the ceiling and the, everything around has been burned and we just figured we'd sit and watch all the rookies load those trucks and we were we thought we had done our part and we we uh, we thought we would just sit there and critique them later after we were riding our bike or I was on the handlebar out to grandma's house from Market Street it's Western Avenue now. Uh, used to be Corning Road, but for as long as we knew, it was Grandma's Road. And back then, when we were young, it was gravel. And she told me, when I get in front of Grandma's house, you jump. So, I, of course, I was on the handlebar. I go, okay. She goes, now, remember when I say jump, jump. I go, okay, I'll jump. Well, she said jump. Right after I left my hands off the handlebar, guess what? No, don't jump. And she ran right over me, and I broke my nose and had a bloody face, and I, I was a mess. And, of course, your mom got upset with Linda, and I told mom, don't get mad at Linda. It's not her fault. So I'm here today, guys, and I'm, I feel bad for you. I've been through this. I know what you went through. It's tough. Uh, you know, Linda meant a lot to me, as did your dad. I grew up in your house half the time, half the time in my house when we were younger. Nate and I were real close. Um, you know, I spent the night there a lot. Get up in the morning, she always had a chocolate cake for us for breakfast. Big bowl of chocolate cake and milk, man. I'll never forget that stuff. You know, I remember we'd go down to the shop and we'd just visit with your mom and dad before we took off for the day. It, it, was, it, was, it was good times, man. I'm going to miss her. I'm going to miss, you know, having that bond that's here on this earth and, you know, I'm happy for her though, she's no longer suffering and she's back with your dad. They were real close, you could see the love, I still picture their smiles together. Like I said, I, I grew up, I went with you on Wrecker Rodeo. You took me to the Wrecker Rodeo in, in Michigan and we had a blast up there. You know, just memories like that, it'll be with me forever. And you know, I just wanted to give you my sympathy guys. Love you guys. So I've known her all my life. Um, another story. When Bobby and Linda would go on dates, sometimes um, he, they would take um, her brothers and sisters and I uh, with them. Uh, they took us to go see Mary Poppins, the old Mary Poppins, um, with Julie Andrews and Dick Van Dyke. Um, they took me to um, see Thomasina. Um, We'd go, um, day, go skating, roller skating in Fort Wayne. Uh, so it was like, well, do you know about dating? Well, I just know to go with my brother and, and his girlfriend. Okay, so it's been 
five plus years since my grandma stopped smoking. And being her grandchild, I've never smoked and neither has any of the grandkids. So I and all my cousins would be like, can we have a cigarette? And then she'd like look at us too and be like, oh yeah, they're on the counter or they're in the jar or they're in the glove box or whatever. But our parents would freak out because they would be like gum because that's how my grandma stopped smoking was she would go get a cigarette and be a piece of gum. And so we all had cigarettes as a kid. Hi, um, I got a few stories about Linda and myself. Uh, I'll start when I remember when I was, she was 16 and I was only 12 and she met Bob and she would one night she came home, she was upset with Bob, and she threw his ring, his class ring, so I put it in my pillow she sheet, so she went to throw it out the bedroom window. And I used to do the Angora and fluff it up, and if I didn't do it right, I had to do it all over again. <laughs> and um, she slept walk in her sleep, and one time she crawled into my bed and I said, Linda, what are you doing in my bed? This is my bed, get out of my bed. I said, no, Linda, this is my bed. She goes, it is not. So I landed up going in her bed and then she came into her bedroom and, or in her bed, I said, Linda, your bed's over there. No, it isn't, this is my bed. So I got back to my bed and this went on about four times before I finally went and woke up mom. and that. Linda scared me when she'd slept walk. I would follow her down the stairs. She would try to get in the medicine cabinet, so I'd have to run upstairs and tell mom. So we had to lock the medicine cabinet. Or she'd try to go down the basement. I was afraid she was gonna fall. Yes, Linda was my big sister, but I did look after her too. Hi, I'm Mark Sprunger, and uh, I've known the family for a very long time. The Heckmans are really good, hard-working people. And, and I graduated Bobby, and so I got to know Linda. And uh, I coached Bobby Jr. in baseball two years, Teen League. And he's a good ball player. And uh, uh, Bobby had to go to work his 15-year-old year, and I, I missed him. I, I, I could have used him when he was a 15-year-old. But anyways, I, I got to know Linda, you know, through Bobby and our class reunions, and she's always friendly, very nice. I think she always had a smile on her face that I know of. But uh, and then at Walmart, I bumped into her. But uh, uh, she was a good fan, and I, I know she was a great mother and a good wife. And so, anyways, we'll all miss her. But uh, our prayers are with the family. My prayers with the family, and and. Uh, she Lord knows that she's probably in a better place at this time. But uh, anyways, she was always very friendly. Linda was good to me. I'm John. I'm Sally's husband. Uh, Linda's brother-in-law. Brother you know, I've, I've known Linda most of my life. 48 and a half years. I remember Sally, when I met Sally, talking about Linda. Before we got married, we, we went over to their house, and uh, I met Bob and Linda, and they ordered pizza. You know, they've been friends ever since. She, uh, she was a very good woman. I remember one time we um, were we were going to Fort Wayne shopping, and it was when Mama and Daddy had the um, red Mustang, and there was um, Mama and me and Grandma, um, and then there was um, Sharni, May. Jimmy's Linda and Bobby's Linda and um, I believe it was Bobby's Linda that was um, 
pregnant. I'm, I'm thinking it was with Tina. So that meant we had some little kids also. So there were about, as we teased uh, and joked about, there were 11 and a half of us in that red must day um, going shopping in Fort Wayne. It's a long time ago when uh, Dale Heckman and Bob had the repair shop. They repaired cars and trucks down there on Indiana Street. And I was there a lot because they worked on our police cars. Anyway, I had gotten a call that there was possible marijuana plants being grown out in an empty lot down in the west end of town. So I went down there and sure enough there's little pots there that had marijuana plants in them. So I picked those up and on the way back in I thought, oh I gotta stop and I don't know, do some kind of business there at the Heckman shop. And, and so I stopped in there and then I saw Lynn in there and I thought, oh I'm gonna have a little fun with this. So I took those marijuana plants in and I said, hey Linda, because I knew she loves plants, but hey Linda, I had six extra uh, marigold plants. Uh, could you use them? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. She said, I said, well here, you can have them. Well thank you, thank you. So I got done what I was going to do and I left and when I got outside I ran into Bobby, her son, and I said, hey, run in and ask your mom what she's doing with marijuana plants in there. And so he did, and I'm telling you, the door on that office just blew open, and out she come, just, Bob oh, France, darn you, don't you ever, get those out of here, she said. Darn you, what, what if I had got caught? I said, oh, you're in possession of marijuana plants. Oh, now I've got you. She said, don't you, don't you ever do that again. And, back at you went and ever so often when I'd see her I'd ask her are you still raising marigolds she was a great sister when she was 16 Bob was over our house it's her 16th birthday and I for some unknown reason I don't know why our mom gave Linda a pacifier and Linda put it in her mouth and mom took a picture of it and Bob's just laughing. He thought it was hilarious, which it was. Just, it was either two or three years ago, uh, Tina and Linda came down to Houston, uh, where I live. And <clears throat> they, um, my friends, Mary Nell and I, um, and Linda, a, a friend of mine is named Linda, they helped me entertain Tina and Linda. And one day we went and took them to Galveston Island, uh, which is just down the road from me. And Tina and Linda had such a good time in Galveston that they asked if we could go back the next day and we did. And to see um, Linda and Tina just go, Mary Nell and I, we were the ones sitting down uh, because they were just going, going, going. Uh, we toured um, Moody Mansion, which is an old um, mansion in Galveston uh, that survived the 19 hurricane. Um, went through Bishop's Palace, another home. Um, and we stopped and of course, if you go to Galveston, you gotta stop and eat. Um, we ate. Um, we went and took Linda um, and Tina to Kima uh, to the boardwalk uh, for Linda's birthday. And it was Mary Nell, Linda and I sitting while Tina and Linda went and went walking and went around uh, the boardwalk. And it just made me, I was so glad that they came down and and how and they could see that um, this little kid um, had finally grown up and was able to um, make it in big city. And um, so when we go to Galveston, we always talk about the times that we had um, with them, with Tina and Linda in Galveston.
We had a lot of good times swimming. We went out to the state, what we call the state park, which is Hobache. And to us, it's still the state park. And I believe we even call it the state forest. And when we were younger. And we had good times climbing the towers and our mom taking pictures of us up there and going to Lulu Zoo and sitting on the big turtles. We had a good childhood and Linda had a good life with her family, with Bob and Tina and me and Bobby. We'll all miss her but she'll always be in our hearts. I love you guys. I'm the only grandchild that grandma slapped <laughs> and it was all started in her kitchen when she asked me to unload the dishwasher dishwasher and I was <laughs> mocking her cat and I went meow <laughs> and that was really bad and she slapped me. <laughs> we even had our last banana split just about a week or so before she passed because I told Linda, I said, uh, Linda, we haven't had our first banana split yet. And she, her eyes lit up, Tina seen it, and she had a smile on her face. Tina went out and got our banana split, and we had our last banana split together. So that was my last memories. I love, I love you, you, Grandma. grandma. We, 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 said, we said it different. <laughs> we got to redo yeah. it. OK, ready? Three, two. One. We love, <laughs> I thought you were going to say go. We love you, Grandma.